bunch together in a segment. So I'll be talking about them. But before that, I'd like to ask you again to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers to ensure that your question does get read in the air. Please use the link, gsmcpodcast.net. Really is love the show, and it really does mean a lot. So thank you so much for that. And let's get back into the show for today. All right, so we are going to be talking about, again, some American League trades, um, all the big trades in the American League that did happen. And, uh, yeah, giving my thoughts on them. Again, if I didn't talk about a trade here that you wanted me to give my thoughts on, I'd ha- it, I've definitely already talked about it. It's on the channel somewhere. Um, you know, just look at, you know, try to think of something. Try to look at a video where it might be. I'm sure it's there. So, yeah, I'll be going over all these trades. We have right here uh, seven, I believe. So we'll be going over them. And let's get into it. So, first off, we have the Yankees trading for Padres reliever Daniel De Los Santos. The Padres traded for three relievers at this deadline, Jason Adam, Brian Hoeing, and then Tanner Scott. So they did have to trade someone. Someone had to be the odd man out, and that was De Los Santos here. Yankees got him. He's an okay reliever for 4.02 ERA this year with San Diego. I think just someone that is a very good low leverage reliever, guy that you bring in in the sixth or seventh inning to maybe get two or three outs. That's kind of it. Low prospect cost of the Yankees here, obviously. But I didn't want to give up all the huge uh, trade, all the huge prospect costs for these relievers on the market. Were connected to Tanner Scott a lot throughout the process, but I'm sure would not have given up what they needed to give up Tanner Scott to get Tanner Scott. And to be honest, I don't really blame them. So um, overall, I think this is a pretty solid move for this bullpen for the Yankees here. Um, adding in this bullpen addition with Mark Leiter as well. I like what they did in that plan. Again, I think De La Santos is just a very solid. Uh, guy that you can add anywhere in the bullpen. And yeah, just a pretty decent, uh, solid move here for the Yankees pen. Next, we have the, the Red Sox making also a bullpen move, trading for Luis Garcia, a bullpen arm from the Angels. Garcia has had a really, really solid season here with this Angels team. Been one of the bright spots out of their bullpen. You're really, really old. I think he's either 36 or 38. So the fact that he's had such a fantastic season with this Angels team is... Um, you know, kind of surprising, but hey, I'm sure the Angels were happy to have this guy have such a great season and um, make him another big trade piece for this team. So good for them. And uh, I like this trade for the Red Sox, uh, just getting the player. I think that you need another high leverage relief arm and getting that in Luis Garcia is a really solid move. I didn't really like you gave up on the deal though. You gave up, I think, four prospects, which was insane. The main guy was Matthew Lugo, um, a guy who I don't think is going to be anything crazy in the major leagues, but I do think he projects the major league player. So the fact that you give him up for a rental 38-year-old in Luis Garcia is a little strange. But again, uh, the prospect cost for rental relievers this year was so high that I get it. The Red Sox obviously didn't, obviously didn't want to hurt the fan base in not getting anyone. So giving up the prospect cost for Garcia, who again, would like to say has had a really good season is fair and I get it. So it's, you know, whatever, really, what are you going to do? So, you know, nice move here by the Red Sox, just getting Garcia. I think the prospect cost was a little high, but I think every single trade this year, the prospect cost was pretty much really high. So next we have the Orioles we can talk about three separate trades here. First off, they traded from Gregory, they traded for Gregory Soto from the Baltimore Orioles. Um, yeah, this is an interesting trade. Soto obviously came over in a huge offseason trade a few years ago from the Tigers. Was one of the better lefty relievers in all of baseball. And the Tigers traded him to the Phillies and got some position players back to fill in the lineup. Mainly Matt Veerling, who's become a really solid player for Detroit over the past few years now. But Soto didn't really, had an okay season last year with the Phillies, but it wasn't great this year with them. And with the bullpen arms they did acquire, including mainly Carlos Estevez, Greg Soto kind of became the, you know, kind of became uh, a guy kind of out and, you know, uh, kind of became an outsider with this bullpen. I don't think they were going to keep him. So getting his contract off the books and uh, made some sense for the Orioles, made some sense for the Phillies, and trading him to the Orioles team that needed a lefty reliever like this uh, makes a lot of sense. Again, Soto, while he hasn't had the best year, still has a lot of pedigree um, being a very good lefty reliever over the years and has played in the playoffs as well with the Phillies. So... Obviously, will be a good addition there when it comes to the late times in the playoffs. So I like this move here by the or- by the Orioles trading for Soto. Not not really a high prospect cost. Has um, has some good pedigree as well, and I think that the Orioles are very good at developing bullpen arms, or in this case, redeveloping. So if Soto's back to his Detroit self with Baltimore, I really would not be surprised. The uh, third Phillies player you've added to your roster now, you got Sir Anthony Dominguez, another Phillies bullpen arm, and Christian Pache, a back of outfielder. 
from the Phillies in the Austin Hayes trade as well. And now we're adding another Phillies reliever. So I'm sure those teams know their farm systems relatively well now. So obviously we'll probably see more trades with those two teams in the future. But yeah, nice trade by the Orioles here. Nothing too crazy. Made sense for the Phillies to kind of trade the odd man out here um, in Gregory Soto. So I get it. He, the Orioles also traded for in one of the more surprising trades of this now. Eloy Jimenez. Jimenez was the guy you see on the screen as well here. Jimenez was a former top, top prospect. I would say blue chip prospect with the with the White Sox a few years ago. Was pegged to be one of the biggest parts of the White Sox new younger you know generation. Really just never worked out there at all in in Chicago in the South Side. And on a big contract from getting an extension early, Eloy really never lived to anything. And with that contract, having two player having two team options as well. The White Sox were looking to dump him, and the Orioles needed apparently a right-handed bat, and they got this in Jimenez. A you know very buy low situation. Really gave up nothing in the trade at all. So, I honestly I like the trade for Baltimore. I think you're, if you put Eloy in a winning situation where he's motivated, you don't play him that much so he doesn't get injured. Probably going to be a spot starter and late game pitch hitting situations. Mainly it's lefties, I would assume. I like it. I think that, again, if he starts hitting well, maybe you pick up his option for one year and then you factor him in as a starter next year. And if he doesn't do good then, just release him. It'll only be for a year. So I like that. I like this buy, move, buy low move a lot for Baltimore. I think that it makes a lot of sense. And again, if they need, if they felt they need another right-handed outfielder, getting Eloy makes some sense with the way he's hit in his past. So I like it a lot and uh, very interesting to see where this does go in the future and very interested to see what is going to be happening with Eloy in the future. But I like this move for Baltimore. That was really good. They also traded for another right-handed outfielder in Austin Slater. Slater was just traded from the Giants to the Reds and now the Reds trading him to the Orioles. He's going to pass the run a lot, so I'm sure he'll be happy now to know he's not going anywhere from the Orioles and has a forever home this season. But yes, yeah, Slater is a guy who consistently has crushed lefties throughout his career. Adding him to this bench is another nice right-handed outfield move for this Orioles team. Obviously, they felt like they needed some right, them right-handed outfielders, which I get. I mean, you have Colton Kowser, uh and Cedric Mullen in that outfield, so you obviously felt like you needed some right-handed outfielders to go off the bench and kind of factor in here as well. So um, I like this move a lot for... Baltimore, just a nice depth piece here. Didn't really cost you much, so good move there. The Rays traded for Dylan Carlson, one of the most interesting trades of this year. Um, this deadline, I should say. Dylan Carlson was, of course, a former Lighty Light blue chip prospect with the Cardinals. I mean, this guy was looked at as a top 10 prospect consistently throughout his minor league career. Came up with St. Louis and just really never um, caught on there. St. Louis had a ton of great younger um, hitters, which they still do, and Carlson was always trying to fight for a spot and trying to find a position, whether it be a center fielder, left fielder, right field, DH, whatever, and I think because of all that, it kind of messed with him and really never lived up to the potential that he thought we could be. Now, I'm not blaming St. Louis for the player development of Carlson, but I also think that they could have done some things better. So giving Carlson a fresh start makes a lot of sense, and him going to one of the better player development organizations in all sports in the Tampa Bay Rays is a really good fit. I would not be surprised if Carlson starts hitting like the prospect we always expected him to hit like in Tampa Bay, and I think it's a really good move by them. Tampa is really not going to try to be competitive for the rest of this year, and because of that, you have time to take on these projects like a Christopher Morrell, like a Dylan Carlson, to be able to um, to be able to you know try to get them back to where they once were as a top prospect or as a younger player when they showed a lot of pedigree. I mean, Dylan Carlson just finished finished only a few years ago top three in Rookie of the Year voting. So it's not it's not exactly like he's been a full on bust at the major league level. So I like this trade a lot for Tampa. Makes him like makes a lot of sense to get him. And St. Louis just again was trying to move on from Carlson. Give him a fresh start. They used him to get a solid uh, bullpen arm in Sean Armstrong. So I like the trade for both sides. Finally, the last trade I wanted to talk about here was the Minnesota Twins trading for Blue Jays right-handed pitcher Trevor Richards. Richards is a very solid bullpen arm for the Jays. Nothing more, and the Twins traded for him. I like this trade because it's just fine. It's just adding more pitching depth. But the only this is the only trade the Twins made. And in a tough AL Central right now where you're a good amount of games behind the Guardians, the Royals just made a ton of moves. Is this really all you want to do? I understand that you had some financial constraints if you're the Twins, but still, you can get creative in some way, try to do something. Trading just for Trevor Rogers is not great and not exactly what you want for the deadline. So not a fan of that. I'm a fan of just the Roger Rogers trades in general, but just him being the only trade you make, I do think is an L, and I don't really think it's something that you want uh, you know, 
can go wrong. So, yeah, that was for the AL trades I want to talk about. Talking about Enio De Los Santos being traded to the Yankees, Luis Garcia being traded to the Red Sox, Gregory Soto being traded to the Orioles, Eloy Jimenez being traded to the Orioles, Austin Slater being traded to the Orioles, Dylan Carlson being traded to the Rays, and Trevor Rogers being traded to the Twins. So that was our third segment here. We'll be going into our fourth segment now, which is going to be talking about some National League trades. Kind of the same thing. You get the deal. You get what these uh, segments are going to be about. So yeah, we'll be going over that, and uh, we'll see you next segment. So we'll see you after the break. So thanks, and bye. For the best and latest podcasts available anywhere, go to the 